In this episode of Adventures in Kayaking, I sink my wireless 1500 watt motor to the bottom of Mission Bay. Luckily it was only 4 feet of water and I was able to find it. It worked fine for another 10 outings after replacing the remote receiver which was damaged by water. Apparently some water got in it and while it sat over winter, internally it turned into a solid mass of rust and now it doesn't spin. The old motor got us to where we needed to be reliably at about 5 to 6 miles per hour. It got us to our favorite fishing spots, got us some fish, but now it's time to move on to some, something faster. The new motor is 48 volts, uses 3200 watts. The manufacturer claims 7.5 horsepower. I ended up reusing my wireless steering setup for my old motor because both the new and the old motor have the same 28 millimeter shaft. Here I added a bracket and a waterproof box to hold the electronics. I cut and sealed the box so the battery gauge would be visible from the back seat and let us know how much battery was left. The military style box will house the engine speed controller along with the safety cutoff switch just in case I fall off in the water. It shuts the power to the motor, stopping the boat immediately. The throttle and throttle servo will also be put in this box. I ran the motor wires through a hole in the back of the box. I'm not sure if mounting the engine speed control in that box was the best idea. Stay tuned. If it gets too hot, it'll be mounting it on the outside of the box. This is the adapter and housing that the 9-point drive shaft mounts in. The 8mm propulsion shafts are available in a couple sizes, uh, 13 inches and 30 inches. The original propulsion shaft is about 45 inches. Here you can see the different lengths stacked up. In order to shorten the shaft, you're going to have to take the accessories off. If you have an aluminum shaft, I would use a pipe cutter like I did. But if you have a stainless shaft, you're probably going to need a, a bandsaw. This is the servo and the steering system for my old motor. The shaft from the old motor and the new motor are both the same size, so I just ended up reusing it. In order to find out how much to cut off the tube that houses the propulsion shaft, I took the original propulsion shaft and laid it next to the new shaft. I measured a 12 inch difference, so I cut exactly that much off the aluminum tubing using a pipe cutter. With every turn of the pipe cutter, I tighten up the blade with a turn of the knob on the end of the pipe cutter. Here I check the length of the new propulsion shaft. Luckily I got my calculations right and all went well. Here I attach the steering arm to the steering servo using a one-fifth scale RC car suspension link. Now I disassemble the original motor so I can put the electronics in my military style box. It's waterproof and uh, I'm not sure if it's the best idea because uh, that motor speed control is going to need some ventilation. I'm going to have to test it out and see if it gets too hot. This little board has some high current transistors on it, which makes me believe it's some sort of a circuit breaker. There were about five plugs to deal with during the disassembly. Two of them were three pin plugs and exactly the same, so I labeled them in order to not, to not mix them up.
This motor was designed and has enough power for a small boat, but I cut it down to make it fit my kayak. I'm not trying to win any speed records, but I like having the power to get out of other boats' way. Today was this motor's maiden voyage. I couldn't find the little hatch for the front of the kayak and water was coming in. I also just threw in all the electronics in the box just to test it. So it really doesn't look that pretty. So everything went well except for when I... Every time I hammer the throttle, the boat would take it hard right. I believe the electronics were cutting out from vibrations of the motor. Since I had just thrown everything together, I think maybe there had been some issues with the battery. It also could have been that the torque from the motor was overpowering the servo. I'm not sure. Stay tuned to see what it was. If I could keep it at full throttle for more than just a couple seconds, I might be able to go faster than 10 miles per hour. Stay tuned. Like, subscribe. Thanks.